That's perfectly fine. Um, well, we're currently on 23 and 1 right now. And um, I'm next door to Zach Hart and Cody Villalobos. Well, um, they're not uh, answering questions as far as to how we got out due to the fact that it was their fault that we got out. And what? this falls along the lines of negligent and recklessness in that's um, 720 ILC 5 slash 4 7. Jesse, what can you tell me about um, how you got out? Okay, um, what I want to tell you about how we got out is uh, negligence, due to negligence. There was a, um insufficient table in the dorm is how it all started. Two inmates had got hurt, Zach Hart being one of them. Um, like a 300 pound table had been um, unbolted from the floor uh, about prior three weeks prior before he had even came so once the table fell on him and broke his clavicle uh, what was it a clavicle fracture yeah it was a clavicle fracture he had came back and then another inmate um, Otis Clarence it had broke, what did it break on O? It broke second medical car, what was it? First and second medical particle, whatever that is. Um, basically broke his whole hand. So it took two inmates getting injured for them to uh, move us to another uh, unit that wasn't um, livable. It, we wasn't even supposed to be in there. So, uh, they moved us to this uh, other unit, A, A Block, right? A Block. And um, there had been a table there that uh, actually Eugene Retz, I, I can say that he did it because it's already on record that he had done it. And um, a year prior, uh, it was a toilet a year prior to us even moving in there. So they hadn't even fixed the um, toilet for a whole year. Well, this toilet, you could just, it, it wasn't bolted to the wall or anything. You could pick it up, move it, uh, do whatever you wanted to it, and I mean, it was just gonna be that. So, behind this toilet that wasn't bolted to the wall or anything, there's a, a catwalk. So, on the catwalk, there's a hatch, which leads down. So, in, in order for them to come up and fix the toilet or anything in that, um, in that area, they had to come up a ladder. Well, the hatch was left open. There was a hole in the wall behind the toilet which led to a catwalk. The catwalk leads to a hatch. The hatch was left open. Toilet was not secured to the wall or anything. Um, and the basement was the door to the garage that was just open, unlocked. And that's how we got out. Okay, did any of you guys get injured so, getting out or anything like that? Um, I don't know if anyone was injured upon getting out, but um, the, the, <laughs> uh, Cody V says his pride's hurt because he feels as if it was um, it was like entrapment. Did they just let us out? Did they want us to get out or, or what? Because like I said, the, the toilet wasn't bolted to the wall or anything. So we wasn't even supposed to be in that cell at all. There was supposed to be no occupants to occupy that space. So let me see if I understand this. You guys were moved to a different cell than normal because there was a big table that was broken and then you broke out of the cell that you weren't supposed to be in? Yeah, we weren't, no one was supposed to occupy the space so we didn't necessarily break out. I mean, we just, there's evidence tape on the toilet saying do not use. It didn't have any running water to the toilet. There was no pipes hooked up to the toilet or anything of that nature. So there wasn't a break out. We just simply moved it to the side and crawled out the hole. Okay, and all four of you I mean, did so this, right? You were, all, you were all four in the same place? Excuse me? You all four? No, just three of us. Three of us was in the same place and um, Eugene Retz was in a uh, B, B block, which is right next door. So, 
Okay. Did anybody, were there any like deputies or anything like that that helped you guys along this way? Did they say that toilets broke or did you guys come up with this all on your own? No, they, um, they knew that the toilet was broke. I mean, like I said, it had been broken for a year without them even trying to fix it. But there wasn't any deputy that said that toilet's they, broke, don't use it or something like that. Yeah, I mean, they all did. They was like, okay, we can't lock you guys back because that toilet's broken. Dan Daly knew it was broken. Uh, Standard knew it was broken. Everyone knew that the toilet wasn't supposed to be used because it was, I mean, there was no running water, so they couldn't lock us back in ourselves. So you guys get out. Kind of tell me, you know, you, you, you go out of this toilet, you go on the catwalk, you get to the garage, and you just kind of walk away from the, sh- from the jail. Is that what happens? Yeah, you just walk out. I mean, because no door was locked, no alarm was on any door, no cameras, um, basically just negligence and recklessness at, at its finest on their end. Like I said, we kind of think it was entrapment. Why do you think it was entrapment? Explain that to me a little bit. Due to the fact that it was just, I mean, them knowing that we wasn't supposed to be in that cell block period in the first place. Like, it's like they was like, okay, we're going to put you guys over here to see if you guys can find your way out. And if you find your way out, then, hey, I guess you just found your way out, you know. And then they considered us armed and dangerous, knowing damn well that, come on, no one had a gun. No one intended to hurt anyone. Like, I mean, it wasn't a plan to say, hey, we're going to go out here and the first person we see, we're going to jump on. We're not bad people. We just make bad decisions. All right, so you guys just walked away from the jail, too. You didn't take, like, a squad car or there wasn't somebody that picked you up or anything like that, right? No, we just simply walked out the door that was open, unlocked, and, I mean, we just walked walked away from the jail. Casually walked away from the jail. No one caught any new charges. Um, Since they're saying we're all criminals, all these are uh, known criminals. These are known, they're convicts. Yeah, no, we, um, some of us actually do live an upstanding life. We just make bad decisions, you know? So did you guys... I'm a kid lover. Kids love the hell out of me. I mean, Zachary Hart saying, Cody D, he has like, uh, five nephews and nieces. They love the hell out of him, you know? So, yeah, we, we wasn't actually a threat to the community. And they're actually fixed, still trying to fix that problem now, so... What was it like once you get out? You guys walked away from the jail, and then where'd you go? Can you talk us about even about your capture and things like that at all? Are you willing to talk about that? Um, hey, should I talk about capture or what? Um, sure. What was the question again? So you guys walk away from the jail. What About what time did you walk away? Was it daytime? Was it nighttime? You know, after dinner? Can you give me, like, about a time that you walked out? It was about 6, 6.30, you see? Well, 6, 6.30, right? Between 6, between 6 and 6.50, yeah. And like I said, the deputies were just riding off. And that was in the evening, like, right? It, it was like, excuse me? That was in the evening, like 6 o'clock at night? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And they didn't know until like midnight that we had actually um, walked out of the jail. So that's about five hours. That's negligence in itself right there for failing to um, check on the uh, convict slash inmates or whatever you, detainees that you have in your jail, you know? Yeah. Okay, so you're out of jail. You walk away from I'm the fu- jail. Where Where do you guys go from here? Explain to me about, about, you know, the next couple hours, the next day. You know, where do you guys kind of go from there? Um, within the next couple hours, uh, actually we found me, <laughs> me and Cody V and Eugene, we actually found, uh, a house down the street, like right down the street from here. And, um, when it changed our clothes, when it changed our clothes, put on a hat, uh, and after that, we just walked out of that house and I mean, just walked the streets, found our way to Peoria. Um, upon capture, Cody V says they slammed him on his. Shit. I mean, excuse me, slammed you on your head. 
slammed him on his head, neck, and shoulder, called him all kinds of <laughs> and, you know, I don't think I can say that. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, yeah, they just called him all kind of profound, profuse language, you know, when it came to uh, degrading the person. Okay. Where were you captured at, Jesse? I can't remember. I'm sorry. I was actually captured on, I think it was Loose Bruce Road or Old Spruce Road. Okay. I was uh, about three and a half, four miles from Norris, actually. Okay. And you and were... Okay. Cody V was captured on Route 116, yeah. Route Highway uh, 116, Route 116, however that's called right there. Okay. And this cell... But we really, we really want to... Um, go ahead. The cell that you were in that you weren't supposed to be in, what's the name of that cell? Is it cell A, cell B? Can you tell me what the name of it is? Yeah, it's, it's, it's cell A. It's cell block A. Okay. And where were you guys originally at before they put you in cell block A? We was originally in the dorm. They moved us to cell block A to fix the table that had been broken, uh, I don't know how long. I mean, it was broken before I got there. Me and Eugene Retch used to actually bench press the table. Um, guards knew that the table was broken, still didn't come in and fix it because they came to the door at one point in time doing a round and I was under the table benching it, and they was like, who's under the table? You know, how'd the table get broken? No one knew how it got broken there. I mean, I didn't anyway, because I had just gotten there. I just knew I was needing some recreation, so I got up under it, and I was benching it. And you said right now... Uh, okay. Excuse you me? You said right now they have you on 23-1. Explain that to me a little bit. 23 and 1 means uh, we're in a cell 23 hours a day. We're only out one. And they just moved us here because uh, a couple guys, um, one guy said he was going to kill himself, not one of us, neither Zach or Cody, but someone that had came in. They need, basically needed to sell the encoding cells that they had us in. So 23 and 1 is basically we're on lockdown 23 hours a day. We get out one, which we get to use the phone or uh you just take a shower before that we was on 24 hour lockdown with no shower no nothing you know no phone no access to the outside world they, this call will be terminated in two minutes they took our chirps as well um which is uh devices that we use to text our families uh friends or whoever might be able to get the word out on how how it all happened and they came and took those back from us, uh, deactivated them, said we wasn't getting those back okay. because we was talking about how we actually um, got out, you know. Okay, Cody, I think our call, our, our, not Cody, I'm sorry, Jesse, I think our call is going to be shut, uh, stopped here in just a minute. Is there anything finally you'd like to tell me or anything? Um, I really want you to know that um, aside from aside from everything that the news or Jeff Standard or Dan Daly tries to make us seem like, this is negligence and um, recklessness at its finest on their end. I've been in the system, um, I don't know how long, under the, they don't even have my name spelled right. I'm under the wrong social. This call will be terminated in one minute. We're, we're never gonna get a fair trial in Fulton County because the judge Automatically, he goes along with whatever the state attorney wants. So we're not going to get a fair trial. Even he'll see that it's food poisoning, and the only way for us to get food is through them, and he'll still overlook it. You know, we're not bad people, man. We just make bad decisions. That's all. That's it. All right, Jesse. Um, what what cell are you in now? Can you tell me that? Um, H block. We're in H block on twenty three and one. Okay. All right, Jesse, like I said, we're going to be cut They're off here. We're going to take our phone privileges for this, too. So, <laughs> But, I mean, it was worth getting the word out. We're not bad people. Negligence and recklessness on their end, they failed to fix whatever the problem was that allowed us to do whatever we did. That's point blank, period.